If you're burnt out on pre-prohibition era cocktails and instead want to dive into the cocktail aesthetics of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, then stay tuned because today we're going to be exploring the book Mod Cocktails written by bartender extraordinaire Natalie Jacob. Welcome to Cocktail Limelight. I'm your host, Eric Castro, and today we're gonna to be examining three of my favorite cocktails from the book Mod Cocktails, written by the ever-talented Natalie Jacob. For those of you unfamiliar with her work, Natalie Jacob is a longtime bartender that's worked at some of the best bars in the country, including the short-lived but deeply influential PKNY. Nowadays, you can find her behind the bar at Attaboy Nashville, but when she isn't shaking drinks, she writes for her cocktail and lifestyle blog, Arsenic Lace which by the way, also has a really dope Instagram, so you might wanna check it out. In addition to all that, she runs her own cocktail and creative consulting agency as well. But despite all those demands, she still managed to put out a cocktail book in 2019, and you know what? The cocktail industry is that much richer for it. And let me tell you why. Whereas most cocktail books tend to focus on the pre-prohibition era of cocktails, Natalie instead hit fast forward and focused on the 40s, 50s, and 60s an era of cocktails which oftentimes largely gets overlooked in regards to the cocktail canon. Because despite what you've heard, some amazing and timeless cocktails were created during that period. And you know what? I'm gonna be extra real for a second. Because of the glut of cocktail books on the market, so often I pick up a cocktail book and I flip through the recipes, and a lot of times they look good, but in my mind I'm already editing the recipe and knowing what I would tweak or riff when I'm actually making it. For instance, I'll look at a recipe and think like, ooh, Maybe I would pull back the simple syrup a touch on that or pull back the lime. But here's the thing, with this book, you never do that because all of the cocktails are already like right on point. In other words, she's a bartender who knows what the f she's doing. And on top of that, her book chooses to highlight a bunch of hidden gems from that era that definitely need a lot more of a spotlight. And while we might dive into some of those in a future episode, what this episode today is about showcasing three of Jacob's original recipes. But before I make the first one, I just wanna let all of you know that the link to buying her book is in the caption down below. And I highly recommend you pick it up because not only is it loaded with chock full more recipes than we're making today, but also it has some beautiful photos in there if that's what you're into. Now the first cocktail that we're gonna be making is called the Flying Down to Rio. And it's a riff on the painkiller which was created at the Soggy Dollar Bar so many years ago. However, this drink differs in many ways, primarily in the use of aged cachaça as a spotlighted spirit, as well as a little bit of banana liqueur for some added fruitiness. But enough chit chat, let's go ahead and make one. To make a flying down to Rio, first we start out with a half ounce of OJ, followed up by one ounce of pineapple juice. Next, we're gonna be adding three quarter ounce of coconut cream. Coconut cream tends to be very viscous and sticky, so you really wanna make sure that you hold your jigger there for a second for all of it to drip out and get into your cocktail. Because if you leave too much behind, you're gonna be losing some of that fatty goodness that comes from the coconut, as well as the sweetness that comes from the sugar that's in there. Which will leave you with a cocktail that's a little too thin and slightly out of balance. Next, we're gonna be adding a half ounce of banana liqueur, as well as an ounce and a half of aged cachaça. Preferably one aged in Ambarana wood, such as the one that we're using here today. I haven't even shaken this cocktail yet and it already smells absolutely amazing. Like legit, it smells like freaking banana pancakes, no joke. Now that I have all of my ingredients in the tin, I'm gonna add some crushed ice before giving it a good shake. Now that I have this all shaken up, I'm gonna strain it into a chilled snifter before topping with more crushed ice. As for the garnish, we're gonna be hitting it with a little bit of fresh grated nutmeg, as well as a couple of pineapple fronds. And just for fun, a swizzle stick and a straw. There we have it folks, flying down to Rio. This cocktail just works. It needs no adjustment. It's perfect as is, and I highly recommend it. Now on to our next drink. 
The second drink that we're gonna be making is called the Towns Van Zandt. It's a Manhattan variation, rich with the flavors of stone fruit and spice. Now this drink is a touch drier than the traditional Manhattan, yet at the same time, a textbook example of how to riff a classic. In addition, the cocktail is named after the same guy who wrote the Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard hit, Poncho and Lefty. And let's be honest, that song is a certified banger. And while I could hang out here discussing the merits of Outlaw Country all episode, instead, let's get into the next cocktail. To make a Towns Van Zandt, first we start out with two dashes of Angus Sir Bitters. Oops. Next, we're gonna be adding a quarter ounce of peach liqueur, as well as three quarter ounce dry vermouth. And I did say it was a Manhattan Rift, so for our whiskey, we're gonna be doing two ounces of rye. Now let's go ahead and add some ice to our mixing glass and give it a stir. Now that the cocktail is stirred, let's go ahead and strain this into a chilled Nick and Nora before we garnish it with a lemon twist. There you go, folks, the Towns Van Zandt. A riff on the dry Manhattan, rich with notes of stone fruit and spice. Now this last cocktail that we're making is a super simple build. Essentially, it's a two-spirit Collins, but the reason why I want to include it specifically is not only because it's delicious, but it also goes to show how you can have wildly complex results with a very simple build. The cocktail itself combines apple brandy with Oaxacan mezcal, which creates a flavor that's very evocative of baked apples. And with a tasty note like baked apples, you can't really lose with a combination like that. The drink is called After Midnight, but don't take that literally as this cocktail is delicious at all hours of the day. Now let's make one. To make an After Midnight, first we start out with three quarter ounce lime juice, as well as three quarter ounce simple syrup, followed up with one ounce of apple brandy, as well as an ounce of Oaxaca mezcal. Next, we're gonna be adding some crushed ice to our tin and giving it a good shake to get the drink aerated and chilled. Now that the drink's all frothy and aerated, we're gonna to top it off with a bit of club soda. Finally, we're gonna be pouring that mixture over the rocks into a chilled Collins glass. Now, instead of the traditional garnish that you would get on a Collins Riff, instead, we're gonna be getting a fan green apple on this cocktail to accentuate the flavors of the apple brandy. And there you have it, folks, the After Midnight, a Collins variation rich with the flavors of smoky apple. Cheers. Incredible, clean, austere, and absolutely delicious. And there you have it, folks. Three of my favorite cocktails out of Natalie Jacobs' book, Mod Cocktails. And if you enjoyed these three cocktails, I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of her book yourself because the book itself is chock full of even more recipes that are every bit as delicious as these three that you're looking at. But now that we've wrapped up for today, are there any other cocktail books out there that you would like us to feature in a future episode of Cocktail Limelight? If so, leave them in the comments down below and who knows, maybe your book pick will be featured in a future episode. And with that said, don't forget to muddle that like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to dive deeper into the world of craft cocktails, be sure to check out the Bartender Large podcast, which I host over on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else where quality podcasts are found. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again next week. Mm -hmm.